Hi there. My name is Ishara Premium and welcome to the Business Lecturer in Within Show. On today's show, I'll be discussing with you some of the basic principles and concepts that you have to understand when it comes to the issue about financial management and advanced financial management. Because when it comes to these two subjects in level two and level three respectively, you have to understand some basic concepts such as sources of finance, cost of capital, business valuation, investment appraisal, and that is what I want to touch on in this series. So this is going to be a new series that I'm going to go through and go through a couple of videos with you on the basic concept that you have to understand in relation to the idea about financial management and advanced financial management. I will also entreat you to make sure that you follow me on Instagram, like my page on Facebook, and also get uh, subscribed to my channel on YouTube so that you can get access to these materials. And I will make sure, you also have to make sure that you follow me during or throughout the series to get the full benefit of the entire course. Now, if you watch my earlier series on financial management, I made mention of various things that you have to understand when it comes to financial management, and I spoke primarily on four major decisions. These decisions are very critical to the success of every business and to the success of any student going to sit for the financial management paper or the advanced financial management paper. I made mention of the issue about investment decisions and I said under that we'll be looking at issues such as investment appraisal there in the level three advanced financial management. We'll be discussing issues such as acquisition and merger and other issues like corporate restructuring, corporate organization, all of these things are related to investment decisions. Then they are also connected with the second thing called financing decision. So I said the investment decisions has to do with what are the areas we can spend money. Financing decision has to do with two things. Where do we get the money from sources of finance and what is the cost of that money? Cost of capital. So I made mention of the fact that the financing decision is closely related to what we refer to as the dividend decision. Because how much dividend you pay out as a company will be will affect how much profit you, are, you can retain as a company. So if the company pays out 100% dividend, that means there is zero retention. If the company pays out 30% dividend, that means there is 70% retention. So we made mention of the fact that the uh, dividend decisions are closely related, whatever policy we put in place, are closely related to financing decisions. And then the last thing has to do with the risk management decision. So in the first part of this series, we'll be looking at sources of finance, or what we call business finance. So I'm going to be touching on the financing decisions, all right? So that's what we're going to be spending this series on and find out how we can understand this. So when it comes to the financing decision, what I'm actually going to be talking about is business finance. Business finance. This is no matter, so it's a bit faint. Let's see if I can get it done. Okay, so let's get going. Right, so business finance is divided into two areas, or that is how I teach it, so I have divided it into two parts. And it goes in pair, right? It goes in the pair like that. One doesn't go and leave the other, they go together. So business finance, I've decided to divide it into two, and that is sources of finance, where do we get the money from, and then cost of capital, what is the cost of that money. So when we are looking at the sources of finance, there are various sources of finance that we can talk about. There are long-term sources of finance and short-term sources of finance. Our discussion during this series in, in business, under business finance, is going to be based on the long-term sources of finance. So for instance, when you are talking about the short-term sources of finance, what do we do in the short term? In the short term, you and I know that we are going to raise finance from bank overdraft. It's a source of finance to the company. Then trade credit, buying goods on credit from suppliers is also a short-term finance to the company or for the company. Then also the issue about short-term bank loans because there are some bank loans that we can go in for that are short-term that we have to pay within six months or less than that and that could also be a short-term source of finance. So as I mentioned, our concern really here is not to look at a short-term source of finance. We're looking at that later on, but I want to spend my time and look at the long-term sources of finance. 
So when we are talking about the long-term sources of finance, we would have to ask ourselves, where do we get a long-term finance from, and then what is the cost of that finance? It goes hand in hand. Now, in making those decisions about sources of finance and the cost of capital, there is something in the middle called the uh, risks that is associated with it. Because the capital structure of the company will expose the company uh, or will expose or not expose the company into financial risks or what we call the GRN risks. So the issue about Modigliani and Miller's concept about GRN, about raising debt, will also be discussed in the middle of these two extremes. So where do we get the money from sources of finance? What is the cost of capital? How much are we going to be paying to the people who supply or who provide us with the finance? So let's begin the discussion about sources of finance. Now, if you remember in the previous series, I made mention of the issue about the pecking order theory. So the pecking order theory states that when a business is looking for funds, it first goes into uh, its retained earnings, all right? That's the first level to check whether they have enough money available to be able to undertake the positive NPV project that they intend to undertake. If there are no much money, then they come to the second level, which is what? Debt finance. So this is where they go and borrow or they issue loan notes or they take long-term bank loan from the bank or they issue debenture notes. So that is debt. Then we, after that, we come to equity. This is where we go to the shareholders of the company to raise finance from the shareholders. Now, we made mention of the fact that the reason why the de debt is ranked over equity is that debt is tax deductible, right? Debt is tax deductible. Now, that statement there is very important because in our discussion of of business finance, looking at the sources of finance and looking at the cost of capital, it is going to be the central of our dis discussion. So you want to make sure that you understand how this is done in relation to that. So I'm going to follow the pecking order theory. First thing is about retained earnings. Now usually when a company uses the retained earnings, that is the earnings that are supposed to be given to the shareholders, and the company uses it as a source of finance to finance a project or to finance an, an undertaking, then certainly the cost of uh, that retained earning, which will be retained, which will be determined, or which will be termed as cost of equity, will still be the same as the company's current cost of capital. Because, or the, yes, the current cost of capital on the company, because that is the uh, that is our money, and so when we are going to use that money to appraise any project or to invest in any project, we are going to appraise that project using the current cost of capital of the company. So with retained earning, there is not much to be done. When we use retained earning to finance any project, the cost of that capital is going to be the current cost of capital of the company. Why? Because the company is using its current uh, uh, reserves to invest in a no project, and hence, their cost of capital currently will be what to apply in the uh, new project. So that is what you have to understand when it comes to retained earnings. In the next video, we will discuss the issue about debt, and then we will come to equity. Remember, you share the video with the people that you think that they must watch this video. Comment below as well with all your, your questions and the topics or the subjects that you want me to cover, and I will be cover that. I will be covering some of those in the next video that I do. So I'll see you in the next lesson as we continue with the journey on this topic, business finance.